Amen. take the middle so uh, <laughs> you don't jump over the table on him or no. uh, vice versa? That was, that was a few years ago. How are you doing, bro? It's my day off, right? It's your day off? Yeah. Both of us. I gotta <laughs> give you the real hug, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you guys. How you been, man? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. All right. Hey, this really is the first time we see each other in a long time. Yeah. yeah. But you, I haven't had a chance to talk to you in forever, dude. You're the girl Vince could never get. <laughs> That's yeah. how I see it. Well, well, you know, he, exactly. he, maybe maybe that's so, but he, at the same time, years ago, because we did talk over the years, mm. you know, and he told me a couple of times, you know, every time we'd come this close to making something happen, and then, you know, I'd end up staying with WCW, he said, someday, someday I know <laughs> we're going to do business together, you know. I saw it coming. I mean, I. Yeah, the, then, I then I did. You hear see. the talk and you hear the rumors and then. I said it's a perfect fit. He, it's gonna happen. Yeah, I think it was a now or never thing. You know? and, and yeah. with Might the, have came down to that. Huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. And with the WWE yeah. Network, it just made crazy sense. You know, because now you are where you were for 20 years as the face of WCW, and now we now we get a good push. <laughs> you know, now we get what we yeah. deserve because we kick their butts for two years <laughs> you know now we can say yeah you're damn right we did yeah that yeah. was then this is now when did so. you get started then in wcw um well you know i tried to wrestle when i was 22 in 89 i went 88 i went to awa and then i worked with dusty in florida championship wrestling and he put me in sitting next to gordon Soley as a color commentator i forgot you were with awa that's right that's where it all started yeah. for me yeah that's where i started originally now were you coming right out of the nfl at that time uh, pretty much. I mean, I had taken a few years off. Right. You know. How old were you when you started with that? Older than I care to mention. <laughs> <laughs> Did Come you on. play for the Rams? You played for the Rams, right? Yeah, the Los Angeles Rams when yeah. we were in L.A. Yeah, and then, then he went off to wrestling, right? Yeah. Then you did the Japan thing, and then I tamed you when you came to the United States. Yeah, you kind of calmed me down. You said you just... I take I take all the credit for that. There's no, no reason to hit me that hard. <laughs> well, other, he, he, I, I'd be in the corner like this. I'd put my hands oh, up like this and and just pray for for my I, life I was to be safe. For you. He'd come with these clubs like this and literally lift me up off the ground. You know, yes. I'd say, Leon. I know. Remember, but do you remember? It worked you, out well. We lived through it, and you were the stiffest. Pretty boy ever. Oh, you hit, you I was so hard. Oh, come on. You just say, oh, he can take it. Oh, it was that like was nothing like... compared to your smelly glove in the corner, you know? <laughs> That's true. That's on on true. my face like this. That's true. I felt bad for anybody stuck in the corner with Leon when he started putting those gloves to Oh, oh that God. was brutal. They were old, too. I remember uh, doing TV at uh, in Gainesville, Gainesville, Georgia. Harley was managing you. Mm -hmm. This was the first time you and I were actually going to wrestle. We, we had had like maybe one match in a house show or something, but we were doing TV. And I said, I said, where, where, where's Leon? And I could, he says, he's oh, Carly. Yeah, he's <laughs> over there, you know. I, uh, I, I can hear all this, you know, I go, oh, is that Leon? He goes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's nervous because he's wrestling yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nervous. <laughs> he's puking. Oh, no, in the, oh, no. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm embarrassed now. That, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it was before football game. The same way, and it, it really never went away. You're a warrior, brother. <laughs> that's the way you do things. That's what we all do, right? <laughs> right. There's no, you know what? As a football player, I can say this, and you've been there, and you, I know you have. No one, um, you know, really understands that there's, there's. There's no days off. You don't take a day off. Or if you get hurt in the middle of the match, you finish the match. All right. I can remember a time getting injured in the ring and having to stop. Yeah. But <laughs> the Omni in Atlanta? With me? Oh, with you. <laughs> God, I knew that was. I should have. I walked in. Here, there's that softball. <laughs> Dive off the top rope, the power slam, remember? Yeah. You'd power slam me, and we did it in the Omni one night, and it, it, we, did, we bounced up in the air like this. And you came back down on top of me, and when you came down on top of me, I remember just, you know, just being kind of cockeyed, and you know, and I could see out of my skin like a rib, no, poke out like this. I went uh, just oh, for a second, geez. and it went right back down. I went, oh, oh, you know, I couldn't breathe. Okay, the strap match, real yeah. quick, and you, yeah. you get it. I had won oh. the match, and I'm in the corner, and he just hits me about 50 times, and he slices my eardrum, and the blood, and and. 
And you remember that? Let's, let's get. The, let's I get, don't remember that one. Let's get the strap match. I never, out I never and Look at all one. the blood. Go to the and strap literally, match. I couldn't even walk to the locker room. I, and see, that never gets mentioned because well, it's okay for Sting to hurt Vader, but if it's the other way around, poor Sting. Oh my goodness. Man, I sense bitterness. No, <laughs> that, was, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> We had some good matches. Yeah, we did. Really good matches. Everyone asked me, you know, always asked me, who's the best? And <laughs> I know, it was Sean. <laughs> <laughs> no. but, well, I've got a bunch of favorite matches, but and, and most of them I lost. <laughs> but we had a world title match on Nitro, uh, and it was, I think it's one of the best matches ever that was on Nitro, and we were rocking it, rocking it, and the crowd was so hot. And I don't know how I end it, but I end up on my knees in the middle of the ring, and Steve's coming out like, what are you doing? And I grab him, I go, go to the floor. He's like, what? But of course, he's going with oh, me, boom. And now go, I remember. <laughs> go to the floor, big bag, boom, and he's really fighting me. I go, dude, I had to finally choke him. Well, it was no, the best. No, 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 no. You don't remember it like that? No, I, I, no not, not exactly oh, like that. Oh, see, now there's my version, your version. Let's get there the were three or four potatoes in oh. a row. You remember those? Well, bang, 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 bang. First, I just like, going one with thing, me. one second, I think we're going home, and he, we gotta go outside. <laughs> Next thing you know, uh, 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 uh. did I do something wrong? Remember? Well, yeah, sort of, but no. Yeah. <laughs> you been down to NXT yet? I was there I, one time. I heard it Blo blows me away. Yeah. The performance center they got there, unbelievable. They, 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 they sold out their show here. Oh, did they? 4,500 people in two hours sold out. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. There's a lot of young kids that are coming out of there that got some serious talent. Uh, the person who impressed me the most going down there was Paige. Like, her parents, both of them are former uh, wrestlers. I don't know if they're still on. Oh, really? I didn't know. Yeah. That. yeah. Mom and the dad. Huh. And I looked at her, watch, watching her do her stuff. This is like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Where she was, I'm sure that she was destined to come up here at that point, but I was like, you. You got talent, girl. And you look at today's roster, and I remember those kids that were, you know, wide-eyed. You know, Roman Reigns. I mean, he was he was in the school. Right. And was he there when you were there? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. those just I mean, year and a half. Time time? Two, yeah, two two years ago, a year and a half ago, and now he's the main event. So I mean, they're building from within, and I think that's that's key to long-term success. Oh. And then the other guy, excuse me, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. I love wow. Him. I think there's a lot of them from NXT yeah. that are yeah. on on the show now. You know, when they, when they were first introducing Bright, I was like, man, how are they going to keep that character going? But he has such charisma and he can talk, you know, and that's the money. He can really talk. He can, I mean, he just can't talk. He can, no, he can really talk. Really I, talk. No, I agree. Yeah. Reminds me of Jake uh, in his own way, you know? Yeah. And that kind of scary ca character. <laughs> are you still tight with Jake right now? Oh, yeah. You helped him out a lot, didn't you? Didn't he come live with you for a while? Scott, that whole deal? Last Jake moved in about, he's been going about seven months, eight months now. He moved in about a year and a half, two years ago. And my goal was to, to help him the way he helped me. I drove with Jake. Me and Kevin both did. You know, we were, uh, Kevin Nash and I were uh, the Vegas connection at the time. And we were just two jabronis, you know, driving Jake around and listen to him and let him critique us and stuff. He had to split up with his old lady, so he moved in with me back then. Wow. And Kimberly said it was cool for him to take the room downstairs, and he got to stay till he lost the 13-foot black cobra in the house. <laughs> 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 a true story, you know. But he taught me so much. So I really took, you know, I always say without Dusty Rhodes there is no Diamond Dallas Page because he gave me all the big breaks in my life, and my mentor. But Jake helped me be able to work with you and so many other. Put the puzzle together. Yeah, it really yeah. helped me do a lot of that. One of the things that always impressed me about you is you were. Starting out, and see Diamond over in the corner setting up his camera. He's filming the matches. Every match. Yeah, it's like, wow, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I did. I went to Anoki and I said, I'm big, I'm strong, I'm athletic, but I don't know shit about wrestling. I right. Know. And he just didn't say a word. He just, the next day, handed me a stack of, a box of Japanese matches. But that, I, again, I remember coming over and talking to you one time about that. And I, Some of the things impressive. that ended up. Some of the things that ended up on that camera, though, <laughs> like from Snyder's Rim and Me, oh, oh yeah, my I'm God, the Nasty Boys, or or whatever. Uh, Imagine what Sting could have done if he'd have done something like that. Oh God, he could have been somebody. Yeah. <laughs>
Hey, I gotta ask you, brother. Oh, Mania, God. butterflies. Uh, yeah, I know I'd have them big time. You know, A after 30 years, I still get nervous every single time. Goosebumps. Nothing's changed. Yeah, only means you care. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you care. I mean, I watch some of these guys out here. You know, somebody like John Cena. You know, I mean, he just. I mean, he. I don't know if he's nervous. He doesn't seem like it at all. But he just, you know, he walks out he and he does, does his thing. He cuts a promo like, yeah. I mean, like no second thoughts. No, I mean, just total clarity, confidence, conviction. You know, mm -hmm. he just got it down. And then yeah. he goes and yeah. and he has a great match. You know, on top of that. But I've always been that way, just nervous going through the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a hell of a match. I think you're going to have a hell of a match. You're going to have a hell of a match. I'm looking that's, forward to it. That's a given. There's. The athleticism, the, the knowledge. Yeah. The, well, I may be sure. nervous, but I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. I really am. Uh, there's, I know I can already tell there's a, you know, the chemistry you and I had, you mm -hmm. know, flair with me and, and, sure. and so many others, too. But what about I can me? already tell. We had chemistry that one, one night. <laughs> Harley? Yeah. He was a maniac. <laughs> he, uh... I don't know if you guys know this, but he had the strongest oh, hands I've crazy ever seen. Strong. And I'm not talking about a grip, like he could squeeze something. I'm talking just his fingers. His fingers were probably triple my my width. This is an 18 ring, so he's probably triple. Yeah. I mean, he's dangerous if he just hits you. Or, I mean, if he just took his fingers and sh I mean, he would he could really damage you. Yeah. And we would I'd be in Chicago, and, and everywhere there's the world's strongest man. Oh, this guy's the world's strongest man in Chicago, and I met three of them. And... Uh, they would come up and ask Harley to, we won't arm finger wrestle, but just, yeah, it's like this. I wouldn't do that with him. Yeah, he would just like this, and he'd be smoking a cigarette and have his, uh, yep. I mean, just, I don't know, he yeah. could he could squeeze this way, I mean, wow, in, really? in wow. and hurt you, and yeah. then just twist it, and they're like still. Yeah. And, I mean, me, in, in my prime physically, I mean, I, I could bench nearly 600, and was 425 pounds. I mean, like 10 seconds just break me down, just like a kid. And here was the deal. So <clears throat> if he got down with a beer, and he'd, of course, he'd crunch it with those fingers and throw it back, and he'd go like that, and you had to have a beer in his hand. <laughs> and not only opened, but then obviously the... Ready to go. Well, it had to be pointed towards his mouth so he could just take it and do a natural. And then the cigarettes, you know, so the, yeah, it's dark. You got a man. You don't know if that thing's lined up right. If you pour it over here like this, you, he's gonna backhand you. Yeah, he would too. Remember the time we we had one road trip, and you had all the gimmicks. All the gimmicks. All the. He had like a a, a DVD player of yep. some kind that Before he put, somehow did. plugged into the car. He had it all set up with some kind of you know pads and out. all that. And then he had something. Remember you had something to close off the window. Right, because it was daylight. So it was like curtains or something. This, mm -hmm. as we're, so we're driving down the road, air conditioning on, watching a whole movie on the way to the, the whatever town we were going to. Mm -hmm. Wow! I, mean, I said, you do this all the time, don't you? <laughs> but I'd also I mean, be it was like a little mini theater. Yeah, I mean, I've had my ice and I had my little <laughs> ice tent unit. Yeah, I got you my food. Had that too. That's yeah, right. And everything going. It was all yeah, yeah. with the big old caddy. You know, and it and smelled and, like you know bile freeze or <laughs> Bengay or whatever. <laughs> Trying to hold that thing at the time. Uh, you know, in, in, speaking of road stories, Lex. Yeah. Did you have to bring a winter coat with you when you rode with him? Because I know you rode with him a lot. Oh, he froze me out all the time. Froze, man. Froze oh me out God. all the time. I literally, yeah. in the middle of summer, I'd bring my freaking down jacket. And Kim goes, what are you bringing that for? I said, I'm driving with Lex this week. She goes, but seriously, what? I go, he freezes me. Oh, my God. Going on that Lex story, let's go right into that. Like, I know from the Eric Bischoff side that he would never, in the beginning, a, a Lex Luger fan at all. Right. And you you helped Lex get that spot. Yeah. Tell me the backstory because dude, no one knows that but you. Like he came well, you know, we were business partners. We had the two yeah. clubs in Atlanta and so yep. we you know we were still in touch, but you know, he wanted to leave and the grass was greener and all that. I think he got he got, you know, frustrated for whatever his reasons were and he, he reached out to me and said, Hey man, what are the chances? you know? And so I went and talked to Bischoff and, and Eric said Man, let's try to make something happen. I mean, this this would be this would be cool. So anyway, uh, I says, yeah. I said, Eric, Eric says, you know, we, we can make this thing work. You know, and we're talking about doing something on, on Nitro, and but you know, shh, you know, we just didn't tell anybody. I think his wife knew, my wife knew. That's it. That was. I mean, that was like, whoa. That's when you knew this was going to be a war. 
you know, yeah. that, that was like, whoa, because he had the monster. Lex Express push, he right. slammed Yoko, I mean, right. he was yeah. Yeah. shoved. Yeah. You know, and, he got that horseman push. Right. You know, he had yep. Flair and Arn and, oh. and you know, Tully and you know, right. all of them around him and teaching him and, you know, he came right in and, man, he, they put him right on top. I listened to Eric Bischoff tell me for years that he was going to beat Vince McMahon. And he'd be telling me, we're going to get him. We're going to knock him on his ass. We're going to beat him. And I was thinking, what are you smoking? Mm -hmm. And then when we did the Monday Night Wars, we started to beat him every week. What did you, what were you, what were you, what was going on in your mind? Did you ever think that that was possible? Well, no, I didn't for, for so long. It wasn't until that, that very first show in Minneapolis we talked about. It. I mean, you, you saw, wait, well, wait a minute now. Something's going on. Something right. that's never happened here is happening now. Right. And you could kind of feel this, this real strong movement. And, man, it, it just kept on growing. You know, Kevin came, Scott came, Lex came first. And, man, and now all of a sudden you, you know, okay, and we're winning every week now. And um, being second-class citizens. Right. I mean, I'm having flashbacks and remembering, you know, the NAPTI conventions, the embarrassing WCW. Right. I mean, embarrassing to the point where I had to turn around and walk away. I mean, we're so far out of the, you know, out of the mix. But then all of a sudden to be there. It was so, like, surreal to me because I can remember Bischoff going, we're going to win, we're going to beat him, we're going to be the number one company. And that just shows you about manifesting a dream yeah. into reality. Yeah, to, over the years, Ted Turner would meet with us every now and then and, and say, you know, I got all the suits and ties sitting next to me saying, you know, we got to get rid of this wrestling thing, but I love you guys. You just keep on doing what you're doing and don't worry because I got some deep pockets, you know. <laughs> He'd say something like that, and then it, the next thing you know is, how come we don't have a live show? Right. We need a live show, you know. And then they went to three hours. Right. You know, it was like three hours. Yeah. Oh, then we're gonna add Thursday Thunder. We got such great ratings over here. We're, I mean, it, the big machine just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I always said like the foundation wasn't really set. Yeah. You know, and I don't think wrestling ever would have went away if Ted's still on the company. Yeah, I don't think it ever would have. But Warner Brothers Probably came right. in. Yep. You know, uh, Time Warner AOL. Yeah. So, uh, but up till then, man. It was a hell of a ride for me, man. You know? Yeah, it was for all of us. Yeah, it was good. So, Leon, I got to ask you, what, you know, you, you've wrestled everywhere all over the world, man. What are your favorite WCW memories? You know, I, and, and Steve's sitting here, and he, Steve's a friend of mine, but I think working with him, not, not, you know, in the very first title that I won from you at the Great American Bash, that was a, that was a great match, great, a great pop, match, yeah. great memories. So, I, you know, that whole time period for me was... It was very special. Awesome. Uh, what about you, Singer? I mean, you freaking, you came with the insemination of WCW and everything, yeah. so. You know, um, it's this, it's an easy answer for me. And there's just no question at all. Woo! Maybe? No. White Castle of Fear. <laughs> wow. Well, what? The White Castle of Fear. Well, wow. what a video that was. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you don't remember it, do you? No. White Castle of Fear. Yeah, that's 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 I a remember, big that's a big yuck yuck for everybody. I remember it's, your, it was a video with, with Leon and me, and I'm, I'm in a helicopter, and he's off in some your blue leather suit getting into a Mercedes. <laughs> okay, I vaguely, I vaguely remember that now. Yeah, it's it's either White Castle of Fear or my moment with Robocop. Vader, you know, yeah. those Vader, okay, White classic. Castle of Fear. Yeah, <laughs> No, obviously winning the world title from uh, Ric Flair for the very first time. Yeah, the know, first time. I don't have like a number one. You yeah, know, but I mean, that one, you know, uh, Hogan, Starcade, you know, big build up, character oh, was, change, that, and all dude, that. that. I mean, you know, it just the best. That was amazing. It was yeah, it was it was good, great. You know, and you taking that time down. If you don't take that time down, there's no way my career really ever happens, and I know that. You know, the things that happened for me, you know, the whole NWO thing, and you're going up and morphing from the Stinger to Sting, and it just gave a spot for someone to break through. And my, my, my whole thing with Randy Savage, I just, you know, it's, it's something I, it's so close to me, man, because it was just so amazing, that whole run. Yeah. You know, uh, of course, winning the world title with you in there, 
and Flair in there and Hogan in there for the first time, that epitome, you now that was just like the top of everything to me. And it was, and Randy, Randy hands me the belt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, that's a big deal. Okay, wow. This just manifested into a whole different other dream. <laughs> you know, yeah, I just consider myself so blessed to even be in this circle right here. You know. That's pretty mushy, but you know, I'm, I'm with mushy. you on it. Yeah. <laughs> pretty mushy. I'm going to say it's mushy. No, good memories, yeah. for sure. I can't tell you how much it means to me to have both of you guys here. Seriously. Thank you. I appreciate it. Salud. Cheers, mate. <laughs>